name's Jenny Pickrell and I'm a reader in environmental geography at Leicester University. I've always been interested in social change and activism and so I've done a lot of different research over the years on um, activism and different campaign groups that are trying to tackle environmental, anti-capitalist or anti-war issues. And how many books have you written so far? I've written um, two books where I've written substantive chunks and one book that I've edited um, and I'm in the process of writing another one now. And uh, which, which, which books are these? Do you have oh, so I've written um, a book, Cyber Protest, and that was my first book that I wrote entirely by myself. And I've written a book with two other um, academics on anti-war activism, which looks at internet activism in the recent anti-war protests. And I've edited a book about uh, low impact development, so alternative radical eco-housing. And that was um, a very different experience, uh, where I was trying to coordinate lots of very different non-academic writers into a free book that we published online. Um, and I ended up not writing very much, which was quite frustrating because I would have liked to have written more, but I wanted to include lots of different voices in that work. So. Uh, you know, talking about uh, the, the, the book on anti-war activism, uh, I think the full title is Anti-War Activism, uh, New Media and Protest. Yes. What, what is the book about? So we spent... Um, two years with a colleague at London um, looking at the recent anti-war protests about what was new about those protests and most of the book is about how lots of different types of people came together to protest against war and how they used media, new media in those protests. I particularly worked with um, a lot of Muslim anti-war activists looking at what motivated them to get involved in the campaign what they found welcoming about left anti-war activism and what they found difficult about it. And we looked at different case studies in different um, cities around Britain. So we looked at Leicester and I did some work in Manchester and Birmingham as well. And we looked at quite a few groups in London. So it's a basically trying to look at all these different types of anti-war activism, how they work together, some of the tensions, and some of the really productive elements of those alliances and across all of them how they used the internet to coordinate and campaign. How, how long did it take you to research, write, edit the book? We spent a year doing the research, uh, which was quite an intense period to be honest because we did 80 interviews between three of us. Um, so that, that took a lot of time going around the country meeting people, interviewing them. Um, and then we spent a year writing the book, which was, again, quite quick actually. I, I've written a book um, before by myself, but it's taken me a year full time. This time there were three of us, but I was only working one day a week on it. Um, so we also had to write, we started writing different chapters and then sending them to each other and then editing other people's work as well. So it was very collaborative. And then it took about another eight months from when we submitted it to when it was published and dealing with uh, the corrections and the final edits. And where, where and uh, when was it published? It was first published, um, I think it was October 2008 and then it's come out as paperback last year. So the publisher said if in the first year it sells quite well, then they'll, it was a hardback, then we'll publish it as a paperback. And it, it sold quite well, so now it's a paperback as well. And how did you choose a publisher for the book? That was a bit of a debate, actually. Um, I think choosing the publisher is a bit of a political act. And there are academic publishers, and there are um, more political publishers and then there are the mainstream um, companies. I wanted to publish with a more political publisher like Pluto or Zed, um, but uh, the people I was working with were more concerned about their academic, uh, the academic a aspects of the book, so we published with Palgrave Macmillan, which are, to me are, are quite a traditional academic publisher. Are they, what would you say are, are the advantages of uh, the choice that 
what is that neat? They, the advantage of an academic publisher is that they are marketing directly to an academic audience. So they don't particularly change what you write. There's not a heavy editing process. Um, they let you write what you want, then they publish it and they market it to the academic conferences. And it's a niche market. And the big academic publishers like Palgrave Macmillan have uh, international contacts. Contacts. So it's also published in the US and Australia. Those are the advantages. It gets the sort of um, further reach. And the smaller publishers don't have the marketing that these groups have or, or the contacts. Are there any disadvantages? Well, the disadvantages for me are that if you write a book for an academic audience, you don't think very carefully about your language. You, you write in quite a, um, a way that other people might find harder to understand because academics believe that if they write using complicated language, they um, come across as more intelligent, uh, <laughs> which just isn't true. But that is the way that a lot of academics think. If we'd had to write for a, a broader audience, we would have, I think, been a bit more creative in how we described things and thought a bit more about what use the book would be to people beyond academia. And uh, are there aspects of the work that went into, into the book that, we, that you found uh, more difficult than others? I think, um, I think we all had different passions about the research we'd done that we found interesting. And so some of the aspects were writing about things that I wasn't as interested in, but that collectively we thought the book should include because it was about anti-war activism and therefore we thought it should cover these key elements. I was particularly interested in um, the alliances and the way different groups got on or didn't get on or misunderstood each other. And so that was easy, but writing about some of the perhaps drier aspects of how the internet is used was less interesting. Which aspects of the work, you know, did you in enjoy most? You might have answered this question already, <laughs> but, you know. Yes. Um, what I really love about writing is collecting all the data and talking to the people beforehand and and as you interview people and talk to people, seeing this idea emerge that you know is going to end up being a whole chapter in a book. That's really exciting. You never quite know how it's going to work. You just have this idea and it, and it just, you sort of dwell on it and come back to it. And I just find that really exciting, inspiring. You think, is it, this is quite interesting actually and in I'm going to try and write about it. And it can be quite difficult because it, it's not clear what you're trying to say, but you know it's interesting. That's the bit I really like. And what sets uh, the anti-war activism book apart from other books that you've written? Um, I try and write on different topics each time. Um, because I think that means you keep a fresh approach to what you're doing. And so the fact that it was looking at really quite a lot of different issues within one, one element, so it was looking at issues of justice, it was looking about why we should care for what happens in um, Afghanistan or Iraq, as well as why we should care about um, what Muslim activists think or the way they operate means that it was trying to get a lot of very different ideas into one book. And a lot of the other work, for example, um, on, on anti-war movement was arguing why we shouldn't have gone to war as opposed to what was happening in the movement. Um, and they are quite, it's quite different to the other work I've done in terms of the topic, I suppose. Are there any ways in which it is similar to the others? All of the books and all of my writing are concerned with social change um, and grassroots change in particular. So 
I tend to always be working with groups and on issues where people have just got together and got on with it. Sometimes there are big organisations, but they've always come from grassroots beginnings. So that's kind of the underlying theme between the work. And uh, you've got another book that's coming out soon. Yes. Uh, what is the other book? So I'm still writing this. Yeah. Um, it's about uh, eco-housing and how we can understand it as an environmental solution but also as a form of activism. So instead of looking at eco-housing as an architectural issue or technical issue, we can just design them or we can just add more technology to reduce energy use. We should understand housing itself as a political act and understand how different people design and build houses, often illegally, um, but ecologically, or how people live in them in different ways. And really what challenges eco-houses offer to society, because I think they're quite challenging actually and what they offer. So it's very different to my other work, actually. But I see the links, but I don't know if other people will. <laughs> you, you talked about uh, you know, things like housing as a political act. Mm. What, but, what, what <laughs> I mean, we make assumptions about some of the things that we do daily, about how we live, that that's just the way it is. But everything we do is being shaped somewhere, either by cultural tradition or by political decisions, or um, by the way your family operates. And so when we change that, so eco-housing is trying to change how we live and how we operate in the house, it exposes all those elements that we thought were just normal the way it was. It exposes them as actually being political, as being coming from a cultural tradition. It allows us to see how we could change them, but it also allows us to see their kind of power. So this idea, for example, that um, houses are often designed by men. When we start to design houses differently and more women build their houses, then we can see why did we assume that women can't build houses? So we can understand the politics of that. But it also enables us to see that if we change how we live in our houses, then we can radically change our environmental behaviour. So it has a political impact as well. And this is my final question. <laughs> what, what would you say has been your, your, your most significant achievement as a writer? For me, it's actually just being published. And knowing that enough people want to read my work, that publishers want to print my books, um, has given me the confidence to go on and write more. And I think um, I think that's probably my biggest achievement, just getting published to start with. Jenny, thank you very much. No worries. <laughs>